Divine Truth Feedback Discussions Jesus, Mary, and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. This is Session 1, Part 5 of the discussion Forgiveness and Dealing with Those Who Harm Me, where Jesus and Mary give some personal feedback to Sandra Tsai about her questions relating to God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance and address many common false beliefs regarding forgiveness, repentance, love, obligation, harm, and abuse. This session was recorded on the 19th of June, 2018, from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Does forgiveness let the other person off the hook? Hmm. What, does everybody feel the answer to that would be? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, of course, it lets them off the hook from your perspective, um, which is which is the whole point of it, isn't it? Really, <laughs> it's a loving thing to not continually desire to punish or control or or manipulate a person. It let them off the hook for what what they've done, but but it doesn't let absolve them of responsibility. Yes. So that's the important thing to understand. So from a from a from a sin perspective, the sin has been committed against God's laws. God's mm. laws operate in a fixed manner. So so there's no way that an individual can be let off the hook from any from the breaking of any law, no matter what their condition, mm. even right the way through into a celestial condition, into a perfect condition of love at one with God, you're still not let off the hook if you try to do something wrong. Of course, a person who's a celestial spirit doesn't ever try yeah. to do something wrong, whereas a person on earth frequently does. So, so it's not about letting a person uh, off the hook from a, per, from a point of view of God's laws, because mm -hmm. you can't do that anyway. Yeah. So when you forgive, you can't let a person off the hook from actually taking responsibility for how they've broken God's laws. Mm. It's about letting them off the hook in terms of emotionally for you. Like, yeah. so, so really it's about you feeling differently emotionally about the person, mm -hmm. even though from God's law's perspective, they are still going to bear the penalty of the law. Yeah. So, so they will still bear the penalty of God's law. And there is no way that a person can be absolved of that. Mm -hmm. And if there were, was a way to be absolved of that, then obviously it would negate a lot of God's laws. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously God's not going to do that. No, so there's only the operation of compensation that's going to have an impact or if that person decides to engage with forgive, uh, repentance. Correct. So yeah. the laws have a hierarchy of operations. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm refusing to forgive or repent, mm -hmm. then obviously the law of compensation is the thing that's acting upon me. Yeah. But if I engage with desire mm -hmm. the laws of forgiveness and repentance, then obviously now the higher law, which is the laws governing forgiveness and repentance, overcome the operation of the law of compensation. Mm -hmm. So it's like the law of compensation doesn't exist anymore, mm -hmm. but, but it still exists and operates. It's just we're engaging a higher law. It's the same uh, sort of principle that if we were engaging the law of gravity versus the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics is when it works, is still the law of gravity is still working. Mm. So, so it's not like the higher law negates the operation of the lower law. It's just that it's like the lower law no longer exists for us yes. because we've engaged the principles of the higher law. Mm. As soon as you don't engage the principles of the higher law, then immediately the lower law is operational, any, you know, always operational anyway. Yeah. So immediately you're going to become under its effect. And I think this is such a good point that you're making about the fact that when we sin, we sin not against, uh, well, we sin against others, but really our sin is against God's laws. So no matter what the condition of others, I, I incur a penalty based on the law. Yes. And I think that when a lot of people uh, approach forgiveness, well, this question, this is sign of a sentiment within Sandra's letter, um, but it, it's... Um, reflective of a lot of people's feelings about engaging forgiveness, um, that if, if I'm not going to make this person responsible, then nobody is, and me forgiving them is going to absolve them of responsibility. Now, there's a lot of false reasoning in that, isn't there? Well, there's, the there's a lot of untruth too. Exactly. Yeah, a lot, a lot of lies in that sort of concept. Yeah. The, the, the reality is you're, you're powerless to f f forgive another for breaking God's laws. Mm -hmm you're only able to forgive another for what you feel they've done towards you. Yeah. Now, now the reality is when they break God's laws, they break, you know, that the reality is they've broken God's laws, whether you 
have an Im ha are impacted by that or not. So, so for example, when a person uh, engages their addiction, they've broken God's law. Whether you like them having their, that addiction or not, they've still broken God's law, mm -hmm. and God's law is going to bear a penalty for the break, the attempt to break it. So, so there's an attempt to break God's law. God's law is going to bear the penalty upon the soul of that individual, whether you like their addiction or not. Mm -hmm. right? Now, if you like their addiction, then you're really supporting the penalty. Mm -hmm. So, so you're supporting them bearing a penalty. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the addiction, you're no longer supporting them bearing their penalty. Yeah. So, so what that means is that if you no longer engage in addictions with people, you're helping everyone around you sin less yes. and therefore bear less consequences from God's law, mm -hmm. right? If you don't do that, then you are bearing some of the consequence for their sin because you are assisting them in their sin yeah. by wanting them to sin. Yeah. And so this is where we see that although we can't let a person off the hook for their sin, because mm -hmm. that, that's impossible for us to do, because God's law is God's law, mm -hmm. we can certainly let, let, let them off the hook when it comes to our response to their sin and our judgment of their sin and our feelings about their sin and our hurt about their sin mm -hmm. and so forth. So the reality is they're not really sinning against me. Mm -hmm. They've really sinned against God's laws and it's affected me. So, so we've got to see the chain of events correctly. Yes. The, the chain of events start with their sin. It is a sin against God's law which has an effect. But their sin also then has a subsequent effect upon me because they broke God's law. If, if they didn't break God's law, the way God designed it is if you don't break God's laws, then you cannot have any negative effect upon another person. So yeah. there is no third parties hurt by your choices or decisions. So, so this really means that, in, that everyone we think who has harmed us has not really harmed us specifically, except by the harm caused by their sin. Mm -hmm. So their sin, their sin has harmed us, not them personally has harmed us mm -hmm. for a start. So we need to change the way we think about yes. everything. But also their sin um, broke a law and in the breaking of the law, because the lo a lack of love was involved in their sin, naturally it is going to harm anybody else and the environment. But the people being harmed either take it personally or they don't. It's when you take it personally that you feel you've got someone to forgive. Uh, you know, yes. you've got something to forgive from someone else. Mm -hmm. it's, it's because of the personal feelings you have that generate inside of yourself mm -hmm. that you feel you've got something to forgive. Yes. And, and the reality is the process of forgiveness isn't forgiving them for breaking God's law because you can't do that. Yeah. It's forgiving them for actually hurting you yes. <laughs> while they broke God's law. Yes. <laughs> right? And in other words, releasing your hurt yeah. about the fact of the, what their sin did to you. Mm -hmm. So their sin did something to you, it hurt you. And, and uh, you'll get to a stage, in fact, in your own progress where everybody around you can sin, but none of them will hurt you anymore. Yes. So that, that's the end, end result of you getting rid of all of this hurt yeah. all these emotional feelings that you have about other people and their sin mm. and so yeah so it's very interesting how people take it very personally but it's not really something that should be taken that that personally when a person sins while it may harm you personally yep. you can release the emotion or not even feel the emotion of harm and therefore, there's no personal effect on you of their sin. Even if they try to kill you, or even if they try to physically maim you or harm you, you, you can be in that state. So, so that, you know, that state is a really good state to be in. Of course, it, historically on this planet, there was only one person ever in that state, and that was myself in the first century. But, um, you know, every person has the possibility of being in that state. Okay. And there's a number of things I want to pick up <laughs> sure. on from what you've said. Firstly, let's just quickly cover um, the taking things personally. Yep. Um, it, I love the way you've described that as um, an event is happening which is breaking God's laws and I'm taking that personally. You know, I feel it's a personal affront against myself and often when we are harmed it is personal. Isn't well, it? Well, yeah, sometimes the purpose of the individual doing it, the sin, is to personally harm us, yes. certainly. Yeah. It doesn't Other mean that we not. have to feel that there is harm to us. <laughs> That's right. But I just want to clarify for our viewers, 
you're not meaning in this classic sense of reframing that is so fashionable on the no, earth now. Not, not at all. in the sense of saying, oh, well, rationally, I can see that they were driven by something else. And actually, technically, they're just breaking God's laws. And if I have a personal response, it's just my stuff. And I really, I need to. You no, know, it's none of that. It's none of that. What I'd classify as new age mumbo jumbo yeah. or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of uh, falsehood to believe that. Um, the key is to look at, honestly look at, sincerely look at whether you personally have a feeling response, or, you know, to, to their action. Because the truth is we're going to take it personally while we have certain false beliefs within us, don't we? Aren't we? Correct. It's the yes. false beliefs that cause us to take it personally. And so that... And particularly the false beliefs about worth. Yes. You know, that somebody pulled down our worth and destroyed our worth or so forth. The reality is when you have proper sense of worth, nobody can actually destroy it. And when you have a connection with God to the point of a one condition, uh, you know, God is, supply is showing you what your worth is. So from that point onwards, you, you pretty much, you, you know, not anybody else can pull down your worth, but it, you don't ever feel pulled down or mm. worthless. Mm. Mm. So because I have these false beliefs within me surrounding worth or whatever it is, and I, hurt and, and all these other subjects. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the suppressed pain from my past, usually, yes. unless I'm a child. Yes. Um, I, I am going to take things personally. Yes. But what I'm thinking about as you're describing the process is that I can use that personal response as an opportunity for me to deal with, to, to engage with forgiveness in a real way. Yes, and or, it's going to involve not only forgiveness of the person who did whatever it is they're doing, yes. but also to go back to the cause as to why you already have this feeling of worthlessness or pain, pain within you that their, their action is actually sort of synchronising with or, or you could say, you know, some people might use the term vibration or, yeah. you know, but it's actually a, uh, it's like a... It's a resonance. It's a resonance. Yeah. Um, so, so when they take an action that resonates with one of your hurts, you will feel hurt. Mm -hmm. If they take an action that doesn't resonate with one of your hurts, then you won't feel hurt. Yes. So, so this is why some people take some things personally that really, you know, it's strange for them to take personally. An example of that is uh, hi historically with Christians, if a homosexual is in their midst, they take it personally. In what way? Well, they, they get angry and upset with the person who yeah. practices homosexuality. Yeah. Now, now that's taking it personally. But the homosexual is only doing it with somebody else. It's not <laughs> like they're affecting you or yeah. anything else, yeah. right? Yeah, they're not doing yeah. something to you. Yeah. Yeah. So why are you taking it personally? Yes. There's got to be an emotion in you yes. that causes you to take it personally. Yeah. Right? And that emotion is being triggered by the action of the person. Yeah. Right? That's the emotion you need to address. Whether their action is wrong or right even, that's the emotion that you need to address. Of course, the fact is that God created, you know, souls that can split into two and be homosexual, therefore. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is, why are we getting so upset about that? There's got to be something personal within us that causes us to be upset about it, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm getting at. There's that personal feeling that I have. And I have to be sincere about that. I can't reframe it and, and try to intellectualize myself out of it and all that kind of stuff. If I have the feeling, I have the feeling. So if I have the feeling, I need to feel it and release it. Once I feel it and release it and find out what its causes are and release those, when there's a homosexual person in my midst, whether I don't even believe in homosexuality or not, I will not get upset with them. I will yeah. not be, ever be angry with them. Yeah. I will not ever try to punish them or ridicule them or any of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Even if I disagreed with the act, yeah. I still wouldn't f for try to do any of those things. Yes. Right? Now, the whole reason why you disagree with the act is another problem in itself, right? Yep. So in it, you need to address that. Again, there must be a resonance on that issue mm -hmm. and you'd have to go through that to work mm -hmm. out why are you in so much disharmony with God's truth mm -hmm. about homosexuality, yeah. then there's got to be some reason inside of you that that's the case. Yes. So you need to work through that as well. But you can see from sort of those explanations that if I have a resonance emotionally with what's going on, I need to be sincere enough to go through and find out what it is and go through the process of forgiveness about it, yeah. letting it go and, and letting go what it ca is causes. Once I do that, I am letting the person off the hook emotionally myself. Yeah. So there's no more an emotional 
I'm not, I'm not emotionally trying to harm them or punish them. I still feel they're responsible for their sin, mm -hmm. but I can't let them off the hook for the fact that there is a penalty of the law if the act was a law based, you know, something that broke the law. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality under, under, you know, loving circumstances isn't. Yeah. So that's not a good example, you know, like lying or stealing is, or yeah. meeting addiction is. So there's an example. I, 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 the law is going to create the penalty for their action still. Yeah. So, but I, but I personally am not going to feel all this terrible feelings about what they did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's a number of points that I still want to pick sure. up from, yeah, yeah. from and what you've said. Um, So I guess what you've said is that we can take things personally. We're going to take things personally. We do have the option, though, to um, become aware of the exact process that you just spoke about mm -hmm. and also to recognise that irrespective of my response, if one of God's laws has been broken, then whoever did that is going to be made to be responsible. And that makes me think a lot about the timing of forgiveness when I choose forgiveness, because really what you're outlining is um, that irrespective of when I forgive, whether I do it today or in 25 years, there's a whole other process operating upon the person who harmed me that is also their repentance is irrespective of my forgiveness and my forgiveness is irrespective of their repentance Correct. because there's laws involved. And in fact, my delay of forgiveness is a breaking of the law also. Correct. And so I, I love the way that you introduce this idea in this point about the breaking of God's law is where the sin is occurring because I see um, as people we – we are taking everything so personally and making it about, well, if I forgive, what about their repentance? If they repent, what about rah, rah, uh, what's going to happen? And, and yet you've made it very clear now. It's got really those, we as individuals, we're all operating and interacting with God's laws primarily. Yes, and this is where there's a lot of faults in Sandra's questioning. Yes. Because you can see quite clearly that she's taking everything personally. Yes. It's all about harm of her, harm of her. You know, they're going to harm me more. You know, and this is how we get. We get very selfish the way we see these particular problems. We start looking at, oh, they're harming me. We, and often we don't really even care about whether they harm somebody else yeah. or even whether we harm somebody else. Yes. You know, we're often just caring about what harm has been perpetrated towards us. So, and really in that case, what you're saying is what we care about is the avoidance of feeling the harm that's been perpetrated against us. Otherwise, we wouldn't yeah. be so obsessed with the other person, would correct, we? Correct. Yeah. Now, if we're in harmony with God, we would be more concerned about God's law being broken yes. than anything else. Yes. We'd be more concerned about God's law being broken than our emotional response to the harm that's been done to us. Mm -hmm. We would be more concerned about the breaking of God's law than, than, you know, the fact that the person seems to have a good life or a bad life, depending on, you know, what, what's happened in their circumstances. Mm -hmm. We'd be more concerned about all those particular things. You, you, can, see, you can see that the, the, of all those things, the breaking of God's law is the thing. Yeah. That's the sin. Yeah. And, and so we'd be concerned about the sin, the sin. rather yeah. than being concerned about the person who created or perpetrated the sin so much. Yes, and that's that also. Um, that's a lot about the way we live our life as well, isn't it? About God's laws in general, we're not often thinking about the outcomes. We're thinking about how we can do everything best in most harmony with God's laws to uh, really not sin ourselves and not support the sin in other people. That's right. And uh, that was another part of the points that you raised about when we haven't forgiven you talked about we can attack um uh, also when we haven't forgiven we can when we talked about this earlier in this discussion as well we can almost support the lack of repentance in the other person or support other addictions within ourselves to avoid what's happened and all of those things are actually now my sins aren't aren't they when i'm attacking or when i'm supporting addiction and so all of these things I do as a result of not forgiving 
are actually create, compounding my sin and I'm actually on the hook for those things. From the, from the from, law. From the law. Yeah. yeah regardless of, of what the person who's harmed me is their state what's, whatsoever. That's right. And, and so you've talked already in our discussion today about when we choose to forgive and if we could feel God's feelings, God would be saying, well, why are you hanging around, you know? Yeah. And, and really, you've just outlined that beautifully, that really it's, it's a personal process. Um, no matter what I do, the other person is responsible for what they did, but I'm equally responsible in my actions surrounding forgiveness. If, do I choose to love or sin mm. now moving forward? That's right. And so, you know, I feel that if we just see it as am I, basically the question we're asking here is, right, I can't control whether the other person sins. Yeah. That's the, only they have control over their own sin, yeah. right? God's laws determine the outcome of their sin. Yeah. You know, if, if they attempt to break a law, the law has penalties. If they live in harmony with the law, the law has rewards. Mm -hmm. So God's law controls the outcome of their sin. It, it doesn't control my response to their sin. My response to their sin is a different process altogether mm -hmm. that I need to determine. Now, there's laws that control my response. Yeah. So, so just like they, there's laws that control their sin, if I choose to sin as my response, mm -hmm. then naturally there's going to be laws that are now yeah. going to come into effect that try to correct my sin. And even if you, the person who I harmed, end, endorses me in that sin or, or backlash or whatever, it's not really about you and me. No, no. <laughs> it's about the law. That's yeah. right. It's about the law in every case. Yes. And, and too, ma too ma ma many times, or almost every time what I notice is most people on earth make it about them mm. and it's not about them, it's mm. about the law. And, and even when you look at your own sin, it's not about your own worth or anything, it's about the law. You break yeah. the law, there's penalties, there's, there's sadness and, ha and resulting from breaking of the law or attempt to break the law. And there's happiness that results from the, uh, you know, living in harmony with the law. It's, it's about the choice that you make are you going to live in harmony with the law no matter what the other person does or yeah. not? Yeah. Now, when, when you are uh, forgiving, you are choosing to live in harmony with the law when the other person is not. Yeah. Whether they are or not is immaterial, actually. Yeah. They, to, for them to live in harmony with the law, they'd need to repent. Yeah. But they can choose not to. Yeah. Uh, or they can choose to. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. But when you forgive, it's not affecting their level of responsibility. No. No. And also, uh, what, and you get to a point where you feel, no, it, 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 like it's probably not so, right to so say it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. I didn't finish that. It matters in this, it, does, it shouldn't matter to you aside from the fact that you care for the person. Mm. All right. So, so when I observe other people sinning, I care for them enough to want to try to help them correct their sin, mm -hmm. uh, care for them enough to state, you know, what's going on with their sin. But I don't uh, uh, care personally in the sense of you've upset me now, you've made my life difficult, even when they often have. Because if you, re if you forgive, you don't feel all that. Yes. Right? You don't feel all those negative feelings that you have. You, you, just, you just feel, you know, you know, you can see the underlying causes of what's in them that might have caused them to make the choices they're making. You can also see the results they're going to get because you're more in tune with God and God's already telling you the results they're going to get anyway. So, so it's not hard anymore yeah. to go through and go, okay, I have a choice as to my response. Mm -hmm. And my choice is either, oh, I noticed this really harsh emotion coming up in me. My choice is to release that emotion, mm -hmm. let it go without acting upon it and hurting the person or attempting to harm the person more, yeah. you know, therefore by, thereby harming myself more, mm -hmm. actually, even mm -hmm. if somebody had harmed me my angry response is harming me more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, you know, the beautiful thing about forgiveness is that, is, that, is that it stops you from sinning as a response to the other person's sin. <laughs> yes, which is that process of sinning in response to someone else's sin is the reason why our world is in such a terrible state right now because Correct. everyone is making that choice all of the time. Correct. So do you feel that the more I forgive, the easier it becomes to, um, to recognise, oh, I'm having a personal response, or is, it, is, is that well, a separate desire that must develop within a person? 
Well, uh, the more you forgive, remember, forgiving is an emotional process. You go through and you actually find the cause as to why this yep. particular thing, this particular sin of theirs resonates with you so much. Mm -hmm. Once you release that cause, you could actually say that you don't even feel a resonance with that anymore. Yes. So, so it's not like you try or you recognize something more. It's like you don't need to recognize as much <laughs> yeah. anymore. There, there's no feelings anymore <laughs> yeah. that you have sure. that, that you have in response to their sin of that kind of nature or that type of sin. Yeah. And that, that's a beautiful thing because there's actually less to think about and less to, to work through. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every time you deal with one sin, you, you deal with all sins of that particular type now are released from you mm -hmm. in terms of the response that you have. Yeah. All of those things are released from you. And here I'm talking about dealing with another person's sin, when the effects of their sin on you. Yes. Once those effects of the sin on you are released emotionally from inside of you, yeah. somebody else can sin exactly the same way towards you and you have no effect at all. And, you, and, and it's like, you know they've sinned, mm -hmm. But there's no you know, anger or fear or any other false belief that pops up or any. It's like it's, it makes your life a lot more simple, to be frank, <laughs> like, because you don't have to think about all those things. You, you've already forgiven. It's already gone. The resonance inside of you is gone. There's nothing to resonate between their sin and, and the harm that you they were even trying to have with you. Mm -hmm. You know, they might have been trying to harm me, but it makes has no effect on you. There's plenty of people like that, as you know, who ring me up and abuse me or whatever. No effect on me. Yeah. You know, it depends what kind of abuse it is, right? Yeah. Has no effect on me. But, you know, because I've released a lot of the resonance, if you like. Yes. And, and so you can put the phone in, oh, poor fellow, you know, yeah. what's going on with him type of yeah. thing. Yeah. You, you don't even think to respond in an angry way or bitter or be bitter about it or any of those things. My response is a sin in itself, isn't it? If I have a negative response, is it? Well, you've got to remember that it might not be your sin because yeah. a, a lot of our negative responses come from the treatment that we've had at the hands of others yeah. that are now inside of us. The only part of it that is your sin is the fact that you haven't released it yet. Yes. Refusing to release it would be your sin. Mm -hmm. So, so if you responded and you refused to release the sin, yeah. release the response, yeah. now you are certainly sinning. Yes. And that is your choice now, not yeah. just the person who perpetrated harm in the past towards you. Yeah. But you've got to bear in mind that if you, you know, have a response to something, and everybody on the planet has a response to something, yes. until they are perfect, they are yeah. going to have a response to something. Yeah. When we have a response to something, it's frequently caused by other issues that we have not yet resolved. Yeah. And those other issues are usually childhood issues that are, that are still unresolved within us that need to be released. Mm -hmm. yeah. So going back, uh, my question before, I didn't explain it well enough. Um, uh, my question about it getting easier was actually you explained a process whereby we uh, have a response to someone's sin that's personal, but we recognise we have a choice to engage with forgiveness now. And to you explained it beautifully. I can't re regurgitate the words, but you talked about the way that, um, you know, you can basically recognise what's going on and, and make a positive choice to, to engage with forgiveness. Mm. Uh, so my question was, do you think that that process, that process of no matter what the personal response is, recognising the choice to that ch forgiveness is a choice and I'm going to engage that choice, do you, do you feel that that gets easier the more emotionally developed you get or is it a different desire well, that I feel must I understood developed? the question right at the beginning. Um, because right, I, I don't because I feel the I feel this, I probably haven't got across my answer uh, good. Mm -hmm. You're saying that it's a choice. But it gets down to the fact that once you've released the emotion, there is no choice to make. Does so that make sense? It does, but so there's a number of issues inside of me that I need to forgive, sure. for example. No, no, so let me yeah. put it more succinctly. Yeah. So, so let's say a person sins. Yes. Initially, there is a response in me. Yes. Right? Yep. I release that response and release its cause. In relation to that sin. In relation to that sin. Yep. They sin again exactly the same way. No problemo. I don't even have to recognise anything. 
Yes, and that's not the scenario. And, I'm and there will of. not be any recognition inside of me of anything in that point now. Got gotcha. you. Because I've already released the response. And all I do, I might notice they sinned again the same way. Yes. But there's no emotional response in me to recognise. So forgiveness is automatic in Forgiveness that case. is now automatic. Yes. On that issue. On that issue. I I'm, might have other issues yes. that are unresolved and it won't be automatic. Yeah. yeah. So my question was really about the... Uh, Whether if you've released a number that are now automatic, yeah. does it make it easier for the ones that are not automatic? It's like a, mu <laughs> a muscle... A, a, uh, a desire to, again, it's something I see that's so highly developed within yourself, which is that process where something happens, you have a personal response, you recognise it's your personal response, you recognise the laws that are involved, you, you recognise, I want to forgive, it's good for everyone. And it's, it's normal, natural, it just happens, you know, I know there's issues, but it, yeah. it's, it's that decision tree mm. <laughs> that is emotional, I know it's yeah. not intellectual, You've had to forgive, I don't know how many thousands, maybe millions of well, every issues. Day, every day there's like thousands usually of issues to forgive. To forgive. Uh, now. And you have forgiven thousands. Well, no, see, a lot of them I don't even, it's like the, with the automated ones, you could say. Yeah. The ones that are now automatic. It's like, it's like they, I notice them happening, but they have no effect on me. So yes. it's like, for me, they don't happen. And I can vouch for that. That makes sense. But. But I understand what you're asking about the repetitive nature of, of doing it once and then doing it again and doing it again. On with many different issues, issues. Which you've had to do. Yes. Yeah. So one, that is true with anything that yeah. you choose to do. You can see with anything you choose to do, once it's a really strong uh, uh, fact within you that it works. Yes. Now, and it's worthwhile. And it's worthwhile. Yeah. Now it becomes more automatic with everything that you've yet to do. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. And that certainly is the case. Yeah. Although... There are certain things inside of a person that is real tough to deal with. Yeah. And of course, you notice yourself having these responses still. And, and you know, wow, I'm going to, this one's tough. I'm going to have to. I don't want, I don't want to make yeah, that choice this now. This one's going to yeah. ha ha have some work involved yeah. With, yeah. with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not because it's, because it's tough to do. So, so you become more aware of what, what are the most difficult things within you that you have to face that are going to have to be addressed. Yeah. But, it certainly does help you if you repeat the process over and over again and you see it works every time and you and you feel better and better and better about yourself as you go naturally yeah. you you are so used to doing the process now yes. that it's very hard for you to respond in a manner that causes you to sin yeah because because you know that this other way yeah, is, is a better way yeah and 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 it is god's way naturally it's god's way so it's a better way right yeah and so, yes, it, that does make it easier in that regard. And, I'm, and you also have a, a knowledge of the, you have a knowledge of the fact that my forgiveness doesn't impact on a person's repentance or my repentance doesn't impact on a person's for you. you you're now actually tangibly aware, aren't you, that there's got the truths you've just been talking to us about. God's laws are operating on me and everyone else. And so you, that's not a process that that's something that, that makes it seem logical to engage the process yeah there's a, it, there is a difference between you feeling your own rage your yeah. own response your own resentment your own hatred mm -hmm. you're feeling your own feelings and project or projecting those feelings at the person yes there's a huge difference there. yes now when you are in this state where you now own this whole process for yourself yeah you you don't project your feelings out at people. Yeah. It's very rare for you to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you might slip up because it's a big issue for you, yep. but it's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. Like a, you, you can count them just, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the space of years, you can count just maybe one or two issues even. Yeah. Um, and the reason why that is the case is because you're so used to doing it this other way, God's way, yeah. that it's only the really, really tough issues that you're a bit blind about that mm -hmm. you might respond in this other way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great place to aspire to. Mm. Um, and in the beginning, when everything seems so personal and I don't want to feel anything and I want to blame everyone and yeah. I want to make that's the them repent. Yeah. yeah, that's the toughest time, but there is, 
we can transition from that to another time as long as we develop the desire to do it differently. Well, and there's two desires I feel you'd need to develop yeah. and have them really develop well. Yeah. One is the faith in God's goodness in, mm. and the process. Yeah. So that, that needs to be established because yes. if you're having a tough time with every everybody else's sin all the time, yeah. it's because you don't have any faith in the process of forgiveness. Yeah. The second thing is is this faith in the emotional process. And I see a lot of people are really terrified of the emotional process, the yeah. true emotional process. Yeah. And and I suppose you could also add to that the importance of truth, you know, listening to your conscience and saying, well, what is God's truth on this matter? Am I in harmony with that? But that's a lot tougher yeah. to arrive at that point without firstly having some faith in God's goodness and also having some emotional awareness. Mm -hmm. So, so it feels to me a lot of the time is the major breakthroughs have to be the emotional awareness breakthroughs yeah. that you need to go through. And then also the, the breakthroughs you need to have about God, like so about God's goodness and, and that God made some processes that work and can support you and make you happier, those yeah. kind of things. And, and I see that people who are really anti-forgiveness yes. um, have, have none of those two primary qualities developed. Yeah. And, and therefore the third one of truth, yeah. needing to you know, absorb truth, becomes almost impossible for them. They can't absorb God's truth yes. because they, they, they are in complete disagreement with it. Mm -hmm. So, so they are the things that you need to personally develop in order to go through that process of forgiveness properly. Excellent. Mm. Does forgiving give abusers more power? Or you could say, does it give the persons who harmed us, which we're using synonymously with abusers, uh, more power? Um, obviously not. Right. Uh, well, an, a person who h d sins has less power automatically. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a reason for that. God's laws are operating against the sin. So, so when you've got the, when the time in reality, in God's universe, the time when you have the most power yeah. is when you commit the least sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the least sin gives you the most freedom to, to operate and you, you're able to operate within all the laws receive all the benefits of the laws without receiving any penalties yeah. for breaking or yeah. the attempt to break them. So, so the time when a person has most power is when they don't sin. Right? Yes. When they sin, they have less power. Mm -hmm. so, and, and so the part of the, there's two parts to this question. One yeah. is, does forgiving give abusers more power? Well, abusers have less power automatically as mm -hmm. soon as they sin. Mm -hmm. So so it doesn't give them more power in reality. Yeah. So God's laws don't give an abuser more power than a person who doesn't abuse. Mm -hmm. God's laws give the person who is more in harmony with love more power. Mm -hmm. That's what God's laws do. But here there's almost in the question this sort of flavour, you could say, or, or idea or concept that I'm giving them power. Yes. Isn't it? Through my act of through, forgiveness. Through my act of That's forgiveness, question, I'm giving really. them power. Yeah. Now, the reality is we do give people power mm. and the way we give people power is by sinning actually <laughs> by our sin by not forgiving you give them power yes. you give them power over you yeah. in, that, in other words they know that they annoy you and yeah. many of them might even like that yes <laughs> right yeah so you give them power over you and you give them power over your life and your choices and your decisions so so in that regard you are giving them power because it but but it's not giving them the power you are putting yourself in a more powerless state yes. by acceding to all of the stuff that's coming from them. Right? Yeah, so crucially you're saying not forgiving makes places me in a powerless state. Forgiving, yes. conversely, empowers me. That's right. Not forgiving is a sin. Remember yeah. my first comment. If I sin, I have less power. Yeah. Not forgiving is a sin, therefore not forgiving causes me to have less power. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the natural result. Forgiving is not a sin, it's actually in harmony with the law, so therefore I will have more power if I forgive yeah. than if I don't. Yeah. In terms of giving the abuser more power, the abuser doesn't have more power when he sins anyway. From God's perspective, he doesn't have more power. So mm. technically, he has no more power. He only has the power I give him. Yeah. I give him the power when I refuse to forgive. <laughs> so, so can we talk about that in practical terms, sure. how that practically happens? You see it happening all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> so um, 
Uh, do you want to explain how that practically happens? Well, or? perhaps we need to come up with an example where, you know, where somebody <laughs> harms us and then, you know, how we give them more power. So, so an example is somebody demands that we meet their addiction. Uh -huh. Can it. we be specific about the well, addiction? Well, let's say the addiction is uh, they demand that um, we make them feel good about what they did. Just yep. a simple little thing, like seemingly yep. little thing like that. Give them praise. And we give them praise and attention. And, yep. You know, yep. a lot of people who do things only do them uh, to get other people to give them adulation, right? Yep. It's an addiction. So, so they don't do it because they want to live in harmony with God's laws. In fact, the fact that they have a demand that somebody else means they're not living in harmony with God's laws. So here the person who is the sinner, you know, who, who is demanding of us that we give him uh, adulation or praise, He's the sinner, right? He's broken the law. Mm -hmm. From God's perspective, there's less praise. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, yes. There, there's, 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 he's broken the law. He's in a more powerless state yeah. from God's perspective. There'll be less rewards in God's universe. Exactly. He's going to be God's rewarded natural. less for yeah. what he did, yeah. not, not more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. so, that, for, so God's laws is already dealing with that. Yes. This person's sin, God's laws is already have an effect on the person who's sinning. Mm -hmm. oh, it's all done and dusted from God's perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that person having the demand is, a, is a t an attempt to make me give them something, mm -hmm. right? So, so let's say the person has a demand that I, I give them praise, they do the thing, I don't give them praise. What do they do? They get angry. Mm -hmm. That's another sin. God's yeah. law deals with that. Yeah. They might get abusive. That's another sin. God's law deals with that. They might uh, get violent. That's another set of laws. God's laws deals with that for them. Mm -hmm. right? And they may do all of that to me. Yeah. Right? So, so there's quite a lot of things where I may feel harmed by them, right? Now, what do I do? If I give them the praise they're demanding, I'm sinning. Mm -hmm. My power is left. If I give them the satisfaction of responding to their violence, I'm sinning. My power is less. So let's take the practical example where a person does something wrong. You know, it's, it's just like feeds an addiction that they have, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and, they, and, and their addiction, let's say, is that they, you know, they require of me that I give them praise and adulation for whatever it is that they do. And, and if I don't give them that praise and adulation for what they do, they might initially be upset, but they might also get angry and they might get even violent mm -hmm. uh, for, for, their for their particular thing mm -hmm. that they're, they're requiring of me. Mm -hmm. so, so under those circumstances, God's laws has already, have already corrected the person. God's mm -hmm. laws are in operation with the person every time they sin. So the first part of the sin is their demand of me to meet their addiction. Mm -hmm. That's the first part of their sin. Well, this first part is wanting to do things only for approval, isn't it? Is that, well, that's right. Yeah. That, even that's being corrected already yep. by God's laws. Yep. And then they sin by demanding that I respond to the, the, yep. you know, their action that they took with approval. Mm -hmm. Now, that demand has also broken God's laws. So that, there's a response there to, from God's laws. Mm -hmm. On top of that, then they might get all upset about it. Well, they're upset about it is all breaking God's laws too. Yeah. So that there's an effect upon them about, about that as well. And then on top of that, they might get angry about it and even violent. And then, of course, God's laws will operate upon their particular actions there as well. So yeah. that's all for them. Yeah. That, that's all happening for them. For me, well, that depends completely, doesn't it, on whether I, because their, their, their demand of me is their first thing that I mm -hmm. probably will feel. Mm -hmm. Their demand that I respond to their action with praise and adulation. Yep. Now, if I do respond, mm -hmm. then I sin. Yes. As soon as I sin, my power is less. Yeah. So, so now my power is going down already. I'm choosing to make my power go down by sinning. Yeah. Right. So my power is less. From God's laws, universal perspective, I have more restrictions placed upon me. Mm -hmm. I'm able to do less things yep. because, my, because I've given them or met their addiction. But let's say initially I didn't. Uh -huh. Let's say I uh, didn't initially meet their addiction, yep. but what happened is they got angry with me and then I met their addiction. Yeah. Right? So I pandered to their anger. Yeah. I've sinned. Uh-huh. I've broken God's laws, there's going to be another restriction upon me. Yeah. My soul is going to be restricted because I've broken or attempted to break God's laws. Yeah. So, so now my power is going down. But also in giving them the response of my adulation to their rage, yes. I am also now making myself subservient to them, Yes. which is actually another sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
which there will be a response of God's yeah. laws right, towards me. <laughs> and, and in doing that, I'm essentially giving up my power to the person who's demanding the approval. Which is a sin to give up your power, and particularly to give up your righteous standing or your ethical or moral standing for mm -hmm. the sake of avoiding someone's rage. Mm -hmm. That, from God's perspective, is a fairly severe sin. Mm -hmm. And even me acting to give the person power, since God's laws are trying to restrict their power and I'm giving them power, I'm actually in direct opposition to God's laws in that case. That's right. So yeah. they might have the initial feeling that actually their position is better. Yeah. They now have a feeling of superiority over me mm -hmm. and so forth. But I'm actually feeding the monster. Yeah. And from God's perspective, I am choosing to feed the monster. Mm -hmm. and, and from God's perspective, I am now culpable in their sin yeah. because I'm choosing to enable it. Yeah. And, and so that naturally is going to have quite, there's going to be some... Uh, consequences from from sinning against God's laws that I'm now engaging in by doing that. Mm -hmm. So instead of forgiving them, recognizing they sinned and forgiving them, my desire to not recognize their sin yeah. and to feed their addiction causes now me to sin mm -hmm. and also now causes me to have less power and I am giving them power, but God isn't. Mm -hmm. And this is what we see happening on earth. A lot of people say to me questions like, and I think there was one in the last assistance group where, why is it that, that evil people get power? Mm. Because the people who are not evil give it to them, yes. is the answer. Yeah. God doesn't give it to them. No. God, in fact, all of God's laws are restricting their power. Yeah. And if we acted in harmony with God's laws with regard to any person's evil behaviour, we would also restrict their power. So then let's use that same example to contrast it with me entering a state of forgiveness in that, in that situation and how that would restrict the power of the person who has the addiction. Let's say um, instead, you know, they had this angry demand, mm -hmm. but I never met it. Mm -hmm. Instead, I recognise the sin of their original action, which is them doing things without, and only doing it for the purpose of getting some mm -hmm. praise. And I recognise that that is a problem, yeah. so I decide not to give them praise ever yeah. Yeah. until they resolve that particular problem. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And particularly praise about that issue. In mm -hmm. fact, I say, in fact, the opposite. I go, I actually decide, because I'm living in harmony with God's laws, I decide to tell you the truth. You just want me to give you praise about your particular, you know, what you did. Now, of course, that might even make them more angry and more demanding and yep. more even violent. And then I'll say, well, now you're even responding violently to the fact that you want me to do what you did. Yeah, you know, yeah, this yeah. is even worse, yeah, you know. Yeah. And you would keep saying these things, right? Now, the average person on earth would think that's goading a person, but this is how God's laws expect us to operate. Mm -hmm. You would keep saying these things of truth. No, that I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. And if they then tried to hurt you and you needed to feel about that because of some resonance for some other issue inside of you, You'd go off and have a cry if you could, and, and you certainly wouldn't retaliate. Mm -hmm. You'd have a cry, you'd release the emotion, you'd try to look at the causes, but you still would not give them the praise and adulation they are demanding from you. Yeah. Now, if you do that, that person is in a very powerless state. They can't, they can't do anything mm -hmm. to get praise anymore. Mm -hmm. Now they might give up getting praise. Yeah and just decide to do what they really want to do and then would really see their character or nature. Yeah. But at least they wouldn't be fake anymore, mm -hmm. right? Or they might decide to no longer be fake and work out what they want to do and do that. That would mm -hmm. be good too. That would mm -hmm. be a good outcome. But you can see that if I respond to their original sin mm -hmm. by sinning myself, mm -hmm. I am actually supporting them staying in their sin. Yes. And, that, that, and forgiveness stops that. So what forgiveness does, by release of my reasons why I might feel impelled to do that, mm -hmm. to praise them, once I release all of that and I no longer do that and I no longer even have a desire to do that, I am no longer supporting the other person's sin anymore. Yeah. And there's no way that they can ever blame me for their course of action anymore mm -hmm. because I am no longer supporting them in their action. And God's laws because God's laws only operate, you know, in penalty against the sin, and I'm not sinning, all I get is the positive results of God's laws. Yeah. Whether I see them right now or not, so 
they're different matter. A lot of times I don't see them because the person may get more angry and more frustrated and more violent, right? Mm -hmm. but, but I'll feel better with God as yeah. this is happening, yeah. right? With the person, no, I can see no, this is just their problem, you know, this, that's why they're responding the way they're responding. Yes, yeah. yeah. And also, crucially, you mentioned about the goading. The go the, yes. It is possible to do this in a very unloving way that is not actually in harmony with God's laws. That's right. It? It's possible to do this in a way that's actually breaking God's laws. Yes. If your intention is to make yes. the person angrier, yeah. if your intention is to make them more uncomfortable, yeah. if your intention is to, is to continually berate them, yeah. then you're breaking the law. Yeah. You have yeah. to do it with the right motivation yeah. to not break the law. Yes. <laughs> I just thought it was worth mentioning. Sure. Yeah. So let's just recap then quickly from our notes, mm -hmm. just to really talk about how this process of forgiveness enables us to have that response that doesn't give the other person power. Yeah. So because forgiveness requires me to become extremely sensitive to what was done to me when the harm was done. And perhaps here we need to say, become extremely sensitive to the sin from God's perspective. From God's perspective. Crucially. That's really what. Yes. That's the. That's really how the person's harmed somebody else. Yes. The sin from God's perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. So, so in order to forgive, I must know that very well and feel that very well. Then I'm, for a start, I'm far more likely to be sensitive to when that's about to happen again, and I'm far less likely to allow that towards myself because I can feel how painful it was the last time it happened and what I had when to go through. When you say allow it, if you go through the forgiveness process, it's not like you need to allow or disallow. Yeah. It's just no, there's no response anymore yeah. in you, yeah. which is wonderful. You know, it it, is. There's no painful emotion that you experience anymore from another person's sin. Mm. Yeah. So even if I receive the same treatment, there won't be that same response. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And what I've noticed is on one hand, you can have a very, like I, in, the, in the past, sometimes uh, 20 or 30 years ago in particular, I had some really big emotional responses to certain types of treatment. Yes. And then once I've worked through certain emotions, the same treatment hardly like causes an impact in any areas of my life. And I certainly have no re emotional response to it. Yeah. And, and this is the interesting thing is that the, because the emotional response is gone, the pain is gone. Yeah. And so, so the person's doing exactly the same thing. Their pain is obviously increasing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because every sin the person creates is more pain for them. Yeah. But your pain is, has decreased. Yeah. So I sort of sometimes see, um, another person's sin, you can make it an opportunity for you to have less emotional response. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, a lot of people believe that holding on to their anger is what protects them and keeps them powerful, don't they? Yeah, yeah. the reality is they're sinning when they hold on to their anger, so they have less power. Yeah. You know, the yeah. law requires they have less yeah. power. Yeah. They'll have less power, not only for now, but for as long as they hold on to this rage. So that, yeah. that's a, if people forget, you know, God's laws in all of this. You know, they desire to hold on to their feeling uh, causes so much degradation. And, and unfortunately, a lot of anger and rage causes a lot of our physical ailments, even in our body and, mm. and, and so forth. So, you know, you can see not only is it painful emotionally, but mm. it also turns into physical pain. Mm. Mm. And it is the demand for another person to sin, isn't it? If we think back to your example, the person who didn't have their addiction met and got angry, they, they're really, through that rage, they're trying to force the other person to sin That's and right. meet their addiction. That's and, right. and when I'm in a state of non-forgiveness and, and feeling like my rage gives me power around people who might harm me, really I'm trying to instill fear in those people which is a sin on my part, isn't correct, it? Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah, so naturally, from God's perspective, you're going to have less power yeah. and you're going to have more pain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so logical, but I know from having certain memories from the first century about really intense things that have happened yeah. and having been raised in a certain way now that it, it's quite you really have to have some faith to engage with forgiveness yes because you have many beliefs that this is just like sandra this is the opposite of safe yeah. <laughs> what i'm about to forgiveness you know yeah. if i'm about to engage forgiveness yeah, yeah. 
But I also feel, though, that once you engage it sincerely a few times, yeah. you can feel the, the major changes that are mm -hmm. happening inside of you emotionally mm -hmm. to uh, responding the way you respond to different people. And, and once that happens, you, you know, you can feel it's a much uh, freer and happier place. Mm -hmm. And so that creates some momentum of its own yeah. uh, in terms of encouraging you to do it the next time and the next time and so forth. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Thank you.